And what would like unconditional welcoming look like? Unconditional welcoming, you know, is that like even having a sense of what could be like ahead of time? Or is that like... I wouldn't say a sense of, of what could be because there's unlimited what right. could be. But I would just be the sense that it really doesn't matter what it is and the sense of it not mattering. That's a level of openness, you right. know, an honesty of openness, where you can feel that that's legit. So mm-hmm. there's no way to have a negative relationship to it or a soul PC relationship to something you know, as a, as an initial, Mm. you're so ready for anything that anything can actually be really anything. And you're so clean that there is no reaction to it. That's how good you're prepared to welcome it. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me of that. I, um, I was thinking the other day about the, um, the classroom that I used to, to have and, you know, large number of, of kids of different grades and you never knew what was going to pop up. And, and that was the best because being able to like address in the moment what came up and even to like call on the other, the other students to, to support the dynamic and what were their ideas and that kind of thing. That was like magic. And you were actually thinking of this recently? I was thinking of it recently because I was um, writing the creation story. Mm. Um, In terms of creativity, that's creativity. Whatever is to be welcomed reveals itself. And yeah. That's good. Have you talked to your brother at all? Has he shared any little bit with you about what he's been doing? Just that he's immersed. Wow, cool. Yeah, he said like he was... Um, watching a lot of the the videos and like he found himself it was like three in the morning three three thirty and he was like still watching them and um, he said he said that he used used successions in a meeting of his very successfully did I read his text to you at all did I did I No. you're reminding me because he told me that let me see if I can how far back I want to go with this. Cause I'm like, so curious, like how specifically like that, like really intrigues me. Applied today in two different spaces. I love successions. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I love it. I do love it. He's got you in here somewhere and he called you Amala. I loved it. Wow. That blows my yeah. mind. Yep. He wrote Amala interview. It's so practical for me. It's one of the reasons that I appreciate your work. It's practical. It's not mm-hmm. just ideas. These are practices and concepts that I take into my family life, into my workspace, into friendships, into everything. And I get to road test it and integrate it in that way. And then what I found here is I found a fountain of wisdom and support. And I thank you for that. And he calls you Amala. Wow. I love that. They are your words. He transcribed it. I mean, he he texted that. He didn't just listen to it. He transcribed it, you know? Yeah. But he wants that as a voiceover. I so, so would love to know. Maybe I'll give him a call tonight after I talk to my mom. And, um, Mm. but yes, I'll give Gary a buzz because I would love, love to know the specifics of how it helped him in a meeting. Because like, those are hints for how I could apply it in some aspect of my life. I mean, like that, that intrigues me. Yeah. Well, I was intrigued by the fact that he wrote, I love successions. That's not mm-hmm. a text that I get from Gary. I love anything. I don't know. You know, I think I felt like he was in the energy of it because I felt the influence it was having right. on him just by the quality of that sharing. Yeah, that's right. awesome. Right? Yeah, I don't know why I didn't ask him for specifics when we spoke. It might have been that the time was was limited or 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 whatever cuz I just would would be very um very curious. Mhm. Well, yeah. I love that he's like really compelled. He's wanting to one of the things he did share is that that he's getting the um my words, not his, I think, outside of the boxness of it. And mm-hmm. the and that um, excites him, and that's something that that he likes to go with. He thinks it's effective to go with. 
Mm-hmm. And so I think that, you know, based on, on just him saying that, it's going to be a pretty different um, EPK. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's more like, it's more like testimonials. That's the flavor that I'm getting of this one mm. rather than, you know, what we did the first right, one. Right, right. This one feels more like a compilation of different people saying different things mm. that he's found to be like really cool, which is amazing because we have so many really great, like different testimonials throughout the years all over the place, whatever. Mm. Some are written words, some are voice, some are videos. And it's like, Mm. you would think that I would like have nice ones for him already, you know? But he also knows what he's looking for. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's such a win-win for him because as he gets to delve, he's he's doing it from a business perspective and supportive of, um, you know, the, the growth of, you know, the, I'll call it your project, you know, your, mm-hmm. your mutual project. Um, and also it's, it's serving him at the same time. So like, oh my gosh. Mm. What about that? Cause I'm thinking about, um, there are no ordinary people, just untold stories. And one mm. of my favorite aspects of the work is, you know, tell the story that hasn't been told to me. Mm. That is what being creative is about. You know, when you can say something differently, Maybe I feel like I'm going to get so much out of my next conversation with him Mm. in terms of like where he is, like, you know, kind of take a, what is it? Like the the finger on the pulse kind of thing to see. um, Because, you know, up until now it's, it's been just kind of getting to know the work and how he can represent it. I'm going to ask you that in the context of a business meeting, how would you use succession seven? You're noticing that relationships in the meeting are fraught, that, that, that people don't seem to be understanding each other. Um, you are running the meeting. There are lots of personalities. Right. Well, what I would do with that is I wouldn't tell you like I'm going to do right now what I'm doing, but I would end up doing it. But I use successions right. in the background the first thing I would do in my head, which I'm telling you, but I wouldn't do it at the time, is that there are seriously calls to answers to enhance communication and letting people really be okay with explaining and not listening and say, look, you have my permission to explain what you want to explain and you don't have to listen to the other person. You could just say what you want to say and get your feelings out. And this is my inner dialogue, so I'm sanctifying it. I wouldn't say that Mm -hmm. out loud, but I would do that because I would want to, you know, like welcome that. I'd want to welcome Mm -hmm. that. Everybody's talking and nobody's listening. So instead of being like, I'm gonna compete with that and going like, I'm gonna fix Mm -hmm. it or or correct that. Like you guys gotta start listening to each other. Everybody's talking and nobody's listening. Mm -hmm. I would go, you know what? this is really okay that everybody's talking and no one's listening. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to listen. I'm going to make sure that I'm reflecting back what they're saying and voicing their concerns, you know, but this, but none of that that I'm sharing with you is exactly what I would be doing, but that would be running in the background. Mm -hmm. And that's how successions works. Mm -hmm. But since you were asking every session I've ever done is an example of how successions works, but that doesn't give you the empowerment to figure out what I'm doing, like what's going behind the scenes that's causing me to behave that way. So I'm giving you behind the scenes now, Mm -hmm. but I'm not actually in state and addressing it and doing it that way. Mm -hmm. Get it? So. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned in state. So, I mean, your state is one of unconditional welcoming, Mm -hmm. of sanctifying whatever is coming. Right. Um, it's happening for you, not to, you mm -hmm. know, paradigm, this is perfect, you know, and, and I maintain that on levels that are just transcendent. I've not met anyone who meets it as well and as often as consistently as I do. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think my value comes from is that's not negotiable. There is no wiggle room there. It is that way. It is Mm -hmm. good that this is happening. Well, good feedback. It's integrous. You know, at least we're dealing with reality and not, you know, concepts, Mm -hmm. you know. 
Right. So there's the respect and an understanding of people being people. Right. Exactly. And having, you know, their machines right. and, and their strengths and their weaknesses, you know, and these dynamics are perfect. They really, really are. And, you know, can I really represent that? So it's not just philosophical. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the bigger thing. If I just say everything is perfect and that's it, and I'm just having some kind of philosophical wisp coming up against it, well, that's, there's no utility in that. There's no major benefit in that. But when I really walk with the fact that that's, you know, a truism, not a concept, not a philosophy, mm -hmm. then that makes me dig deep into different forms of creativity, you know, and come mm -hmm. up with new ideas and new strategies on how to handle this that really represents the wisdom in the situation. So for the average bear or someone who's, who's beginning to learn the work, um, it would serve to have an archetype to call on mm -hmm. um, before entering such a, an environment, such a meeting. I'd have to go with he or she who organically welcomes. I mean, really organically and unconditionally welcomes. I think that that's a level of openness mm -hmm. that very few human beings will ever really enjoy fully in this lifetime. Now, human beings can have moments of it, like especially when I'm voicing it. You know, and I'm saying, hey, we're going to work on unconditional welcoming right now. Well, they can do that for right now, but, you know, it fades quickly. You know, law of diminishing effects on unconditional welcoming is pretty impressive. I got to be honest with you. So, you know, I would do it again. I would just repeat that over and over again. And I would talk about, you know, she, in this case, assuming it's a woman who organically and unconditionally welcomes and really begin building a relationship with that archetype because that's plasticity. And the more you do it, that's the conditioning, that's the entrainment, right? That's the rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And then, then that becomes you through the conditioning, through the entrainment, through the rehearsing, through the practice of, mm -hmm. but you got to repeat the process, right? Rinse and repeat. That's a really important mm -hmm. archetype who unconditionally welcomes organically and unconditionally welcomes. And silly humans that we are, mm -hmm you know, in the presence of, you know, an unfamiliar trigger, that kind of thing in, in let's again, say like a business meeting setting, what would be a bridge to return to that archetype of she who unconditionally welcomes? Well, um, that's being mindful again. That's mindfulness. So when you observe going it, back to you're losing mm -hmm. your ease, you're losing your peace, then you know, that you haven't done it, then you got to go back to, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be preparing unconditional welcoming, right? So that's where you allow the, the nudge to wake you up, the mindfulness, the, the, the densities, whatever. Mm -hmm. that, Houston, we have a problem this. Like I've been in many a meetings, especially with married couples, where both of them are passionately invested in, we've got a problem. And mm -hmm. they're acting it out in front of me with angry voices going both ways him to her and her to him. And it's going both ways. And they are absolutely 100% demonstrating clearly in no uncertain terms, Houston, we got a problem here. Let me show you. Now, I could turn around and say, I see clearly that we have a problem here. I could say that and I might if it's building rapport or whatever, helping them feel a connection. But reality, I'm like, okay, this is this is exactly what it needs to be right now. So let me see if I can assess what, that's why when I did that sanctification and succession seven talk with Marikita the other day, one of the things I was talking about is what's the role that you play in this as a facilitator? What's your assessment? What's your greatest story, Dr. Michael, as you're watching this couple saying, Houston, we got a problem here. And you're going, and I'm saying, oh, this is perfect. There's no problem here. This is exactly, this is integrity. It's exactly what it needs to be. You know, they're playing these roles perfectly. They're showing me exactly the integrity of where they are. And these are the kinds of things that I do. I think like that. Mm -hmm. I don't waver on that, you know? So while they're convinced and demonstrating back and forth, how okay, well, we have a problem. Our marriage is in deep trouble. We are in deep, deep trouble. I mean, this thing is like a split second away from ending and irre irreparable, right? Irreparable, what is that? Irreparable harm where it can never return again. Mm -hmm. And, and I would look at it, well, that's perfect. That's in exactly where you are right now. And this is the integrity of your relationship and how mm -hmm. fortunate you are to know this. And 
if this relationship is going to be salvaged, then that reality is going to stimulate a change in you mm. unless deep down inside you really want this relationship to end that that would just make your work easy and you're just ready to move on and you're both ready to pay the price and deal with what what the consequences of this marriage really being over if you're really ready to go back into the dating scene live the rest of your life whether it's alone or looking for Mr or Mrs right you know I mean, if you're ready for that, I'm helping. If if you really just want this thing, if this has reached its end, its shelf life for this marriage is over, great. We can do that. We can and we can end this marriage, and you can be as angry as you want to be while you're ending this marriage, or you can just peacefully end it. It's up to you. You know, you can end in a fight where everybody's fighting for every penny, or we can just end it and try to come up with what we think is the best win-win. You know, or we can save the marriage. It really doesn't matter. I'm I'm unconditionally welcoming anything. The coin is flipping in the air, and I don't care what it comes down to. I mean, I'm not attached to saving the marriage. You know, the marriage is supposed to end. Well, you know, it'll end. You know, nothing can do. You can save it. And if the mm -hmm. marriage is not going to end, then you know we're just going through some contortions right now to get you to to save it. You know, and we'll see. TBR. You know, but I don't mm -hmm. care which way it goes. Like I don't care where the area of influence is. Where are the pieces in the body? Where are the, where's that light in the eyes? You know, where is that light in the eyes? Is it in what you do for fun? What you're, you know, is it, you know, talking about your, you know, your, your son or your daughter or something like that? Or in your case, your granddaughter, your grandson, you know, where is that light in the eyes? You know, I don't care where it is. I really don't, but I'm looking for it. Right. So where's the swirl? Where's the breath? Where's the resolution in this? Where is this supposed to go? Is this a marriage mm. that we're going to live happily ever after together? Or we live happily ever after as a divorced couple? You know, it doesn't really matter to me. Mm. I mean, so we'll see, you know, TBR. And I think to have that kind of openness going mm. in, our society is really attached to this is good mm. and this is bad. If you save the marriage, Dr. Michael, you're worth your weight and everything. We came to you and you saved our marriage. And it's like, don't put that on me. I don't want to be saving marriages that have no business being saved. Mm. You know, don't put that extra pressure on me. I don't know if this marriage is to be saved. If I'm saving it, then it's supposed to be saved. And if I can't save it, then it's not supposed to be saved. You know, that's the way I look at it. Now, I'm mm. not saying that maybe I don't save it and someone else does. I'm not saying that at all. But for me to make peace with the gifts that I bring, I've got to unconditionally welcome what they're bringing to the table and then what I bring to that. And then let them pre-qualify themselves in or out, you know? So. Wow. It's so unusual in this society to have that perspective and to have that, that strength of, of knowing mm -hmm. and of openness of actually the mm. knowing, but that, that the openness is the best, the TBR ness mm -hmm. of it, the strength in committing to the not knowing right. and the openness that it can go mm -hmm. either way. It could be heads or tails. And it's not like heads we win, tails we lose, you know? So yeah. let's, go, let's find out what we win with. Oh my God, heads mm -hmm. we win. Look, tails we win. You know, that's the bottom line, that there is no losing. And that's a reality here. And that's, that's a big attitude, like set mindset. That's I think the, the knowing that I was referring to is, is you knowing who you are, you know, <laughs> whatever version of you, you know, is, is meeting that couple mm -hmm. and, and your flexible steadfastness got it. in, yeah. in working and working with them mm -hmm. and, and in presenting so many possibilities. Mm -hmm. yeah. seeing, I'm not sure if I'm really presenting possibilities as much as I'm opening to them, you know, I'm opening mm -hmm. to all of them. They can be whatever they're going to be. But there is an element of, I don't know, there's some kind of overlay, Amala, that what I bring to a session is that, I don't know what you want to call it, faith or trust or deep knowingness, that this thing is going to play out the way it needs to play out. And mm. if there's anything that I'm doing, it's don't be attached to the outcome and let's just observe where you're going. Do you, is this something that you want to save? Is this a marriage that you really want to save? You know, what happens when one person says yes and the other one says no, right? And I have to teach them, you know, it's like, well, they both have to say yes. It's almost like not fair 
that the per one person says yes and one person says no, and that no always wins. It's almost mm -hmm. like not fair. How come she gets her way and she doesn't want it and I want it? Or how come he gets his way that he doesn't want this, but I do? And it's like, well, that's because it only takes one person to want to walk away, you know, and that's just the rules. And you got to understand, well, it is not meant to be fair. It's mm -hmm. not fair. It is what it is. Sometimes you'll be in the senior polarity where you'll be the one that's receiving the unfairness. And sometimes you'll be presenting the unfairness. It's like, no, I'm leaving this marriage. I'm not staying. But, you know, if you can get both people to stay and to agree and then maybe even take responsibility for the role that they're playing in improving their contribution to the relationship. If they're interested, you know, I see a lot of couples, they're not really interested in improving the relationship. They're interested in just maintaining the status quo. I see a lot of men who are very, very happy with their marriage exactly the way it is. And that's a, you know, a real challenging thing because women, you know, they can stay in a marriage knowing that their man's not going to improve and that's fine but it would mean the world to them if he would you know well look at all the stuff that Stu's been doing and how endearing it's been for you you know a couple of comments he's made here and there and little touches here and there and how far that really spins you and takes you it doesn't take much i mean the slightest little improvement can mean the world to a spouse right mm -hmm. would Absolutely. you like to speak to that at all yeah, absolutely. I, I, what I was thinking of is, is what you said early on. It's like, um, my, how you've changed since I've changed. Exactly. And so, you know, very often it will be um, up to one of the spouses to do the majority of the work. Right. And there is a ripple, you know, and there is, there is hope because, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Well, let's talk about that. What about if one party does most of the work. Mm -hmm. If there's any unfairness, what's the unfairness? That the person is doing all the work and getting all the benefit? Or that the person that's <laughs> not doing the work is getting away without having to do any of the work and is not getting any of the benefit of not doing, of, you know, of not doing the work to the same level that his or her spouse is doing the work. So if we're gonna talk about unfair, you better be really like responsible about where you're gonna point that. I mean, is it unfair that you're on a, successions path where you're constantly improving and you're the only one that's constantly working on it. And if you don't work on it, it's not going to get worked on. And so you have to get all the benefit of doing all the work. That's so not fair. Right? I know it's, it's like oh, such a hardship. It's a hardship, right? Yes, but then you do hear yes. people try to take that. It's like, this is like really pissing me off. How come he doesn't have to do anything? And it's like, Hmm. Wouldn't you say in your relationship, you're the area of influence, the most negotiable border? Mm -hmm. And if there's such, such less peace for you in you doing most of the work and getting most of the benefit, don't you think that we should probably focus on that since that's clearly within your domain, right? Within your sovereign mm -hmm. authority. And so, yeah, I would say you should be focusing on that because that you can control rather than your reaction to your partner who you can't control and you're just gonna let yourself have a negative reaction because you have to do any of the work. Yeah, and not get any of the benefit. Yes, yeah, I feel bad for him. <laughs> it, for me, for the, for the seeker, for the learner, for the, you know, she who answers her calls, um, there's no choice. It's like right. once, you're, once you're on this road, you right. wouldn't choose to be anywhere else. Right, right, right. I say that all the time. Like, this is a really good line. You know, I use this with a lot of people and, and it's like, who needs catalyst, right? Or who needs, you know, greaterness coaching? And the truth is no one, no one really needs it, but you get great benefit. It makes things better. You have more resources. You have a greater quality of life. Who needs a greater quality of life? The reality is no one needs it, but intelligent people would choose it. I mean, if you have a little wisdom, then you would choose to get outside yourself, find somebody who can support you to get outside yourself, to transcend yourself, to help you get out of your own way so that you can have greater benefits than you can ever have alone. That is a huge concept. Everybody would be wise to choose that, but you don't have to. But if you do choose it, you'll get the benefit and that's awesome. It's an awesome benefit.
So I love that concept. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it seems also, you know, for these couples, I mean, you're supporting ease, you know, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. It may not be what they predicted to begin with in terms of what they were expecting to, to achieve or to, um, to change in their relationship. And there will be more ease and more swirl. Mm. Yeah. And certainly, and in its time too. I mean, right. It is amazing to do what I do for a living and find out that when people are walking out the door, for instance, a couple and it feels really good. We had a great session and you're thinking like, wow, this went really well, you know, practical integration, hope this works out. And then you find out like, you know, 15 minutes after walking out, there was a yell or everything was lost or, you know, something to that effect where somebody's yelling, you know, whatever, or just being nasty, saying something, some kind of snide remark. And then I, I just think, wow, we're addicted to that version. That version, mm. expressive need, needs, needs to come out. And I think about that instead of like, all oh, is lost. Oh my God, I got to try something else. Because once I go like, mm -hmm. okay, that didn't work. Now all of a sudden it's therapeutic because now I'm having an adversarial relationship and I'm trying to play manipulator, right? Trying to learn how to one up it, you know, instead of, wow, it's feedback. It's integrous. Cool. Good to know. It's like a chess game, right? New move. Okay. It's a game changer. Didn't know how you were going to move. I know how I moved, but I didn't know how you were going to do it in response. But now I know I, it's clearly what you did in response. Thanks for telling me that you yelled 15 minutes after leaving us and we left in such a great place. And yet, 15 minutes from now that happened. That's good to know, right? That's like, mm -hmm. that's what I'm dealing with. And that's awesome. I'd rather deal with reality than deal with fantasy. That's how come this work is so powerful. It's because I'm open to people, you know, leaving, feeling great, like the marriage is going to be saved and then getting a phone call where one person is like livid over the other or in tears, you know, he says, you're so full of shit, you know, you know, things like that nature, which I've, I, I hear a lot, you know. What? would you suggest to a couple, you know, who, who has that kind of moment where it's like, they're, they're feeling like they've reached another level in terms of their understanding of each other. Um, what would you offer them for practical integration? Be a student of the process, be in awe of the process, because you don't know the gestation period, how long mm. it's going to take for things to work its way in or out. Like mm. it's still a TBR about whether this marriage or this relationship is going to work but at least be in awe. Like, you know mm. how you really like a good story, a really good story, and you'll pay attention, and you're engaged, and you can't wait to hear what's going to happen next. Be in awe of plot twists and be in awe mm. instead of like, you know, having a negative reaction to a plot twist. Because if you're having a negative reaction to a plot twist, then you need to know that, you know, you're basically defining evil because you're being a manipulator because it's not going your way and you're only mm. happy if it's going your way. That's like controlaholism. Mm. And then it's like, you're not safe to be with if you're only happy if it goes a certain way. And if it goes another way, then you're mm. not happy. So instead of saying all of that, I would just say, be in awe of the process, you know, like TBR to be revealed, you know, sit back, enjoy the story. Let's just work on the incremental improvements to whatever degree we can. And then just be a student of the timing, how long this takes. You know, are you going to stick it out? Are you going to quit? You know, who knows? You know, let's see. I mean, like, you know, but just be in awe of not knowing and, and be a student. And what I've been telling a lot of people lately is don't root. Don't mm. root for one thing because you're putting an awful lot of pressure that it turns out that way. Otherwise, it's not really unconditional welcoming if all of a sudden you're really upset you weren't ready to unconditionally welcome anything. You were unconditionally welcoming what you want, which isn't unconditional welcoming at all. Mm. You know? So don't root, let it be, let the timing be, let the process be and be in awe at the integrity of the process, you know, where it is. And, you know, that's how we make strides. That's the reason why it's so practical is because I'm always looking at the feedback that I'm getting as being integrous and I'm glad it's authentic, it's yeah. real. And that's how I'm so good at what I do is because I'm dealing with reality and not fantasy or ideology, you know? I, it made me think of um, a time where you called me out on um, doing something or I, I don't know whether it was an expectation or what. And it's like, you know, you're setting him up to fail. Like mm -hmm. this is like a test mm -hmm. and you're setting this up. 
Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's the rooting. Uh, that's it. I'm yeah. sorry. You, I'm sure what, what were you going to say? You no, I, I don't remember it, but, but that's, that's what you're referring to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, now do me a favor and summarize now. How would you summarize this if you were going to describe this to somebody who didn't know any of this work? How would you voice this in a way you've never voiced it before? If you were going to say that which has not been spoken, let me hear you now. All right. I am more prepared to do that now, I hope. It's, it's about unconditional welcoming and being so entrained and immersed in that state of mind and state of being that you're able to offer really an incredibly, not only safe haven, but a very all encompassing home for whatever you bring. And whatever you bring is just a snapshot in time. And we're all students of where, you know, a, a particular um, personal challenge might be, where um, a particular stage in a relationship might be. Um, it's to be revealed, TBR. And so the key is to be welcoming in your unconditional welcoming and let me ask you a question that'll make it very easy for you to say something that you may have never said before. Please. Assume that we were talking to somebody who represents societal integrity. It could oh. be a teacher from Murdoch. It could be somebody from a temple, synagogue, mm -hmm. church, neighborhood. What would be the benefit that they would get from exploring this work? What would be their benefit? You'll go to him. And he will accept you no matter what you bring him, no matter what state of mind you're in, no matter what problem you're having, he will be there for you. You're not going to shock him. Um, you're not going to overwhelm him. You can bring him anything and everything. And he will not only understand you, but he will help you understand your situation um, better, more realistically. Um, and you'll develop resources yourself so that, that you're able to better handle the day-to-day. -day. That was great. There was definitely a bunch of sound bites in there that you hadn't said before. I like that. That was wonderful. It helped to have that as a Right. As an audience. That yeah. was really good. Because I use words that I wouldn't usually use, but right. that would be rapport and engagement of that particular audience. I did a session yesterday, amazing session yesterday with um, somebody that Ryan Cameron referred. It's actually his producer. And it was phenomenal. And he wrote me a testimonial. And his first line in this testimonial is a line that I've been using a lot lately and it's a newer line and I love it. And uh, he definitely represents it because this guy is super special and I've always known he was special and people that are special, I wonder what takes them so long to get to me, to work with me in this mm. work. Not that my work is the only work out there, but it's certainly outside the box enough to be an incredible level of support, right? Because of how outside the box it is. But here's the first line that I've been using a lot in what he wrote in his testimonial. Conventional models don't work for extraordinary people. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've been using I that I love lot. that. And it really is true. It really, wow. really, really is true. And actually, the way I worded it, using like only conventional models mm. or exclusively conventional right. models. Because I don't like to say conventional models don't work. They right. just don't work as a standalone or exclusively. Right. They have their place. But, uh, but he's, he's uh, what do you call that? He's, um, what is that? Paraphrasing. So in paraphrasing me, I understood the spirit. Mm -hmm. um, that's what he heard. 
but I know that, you know, I don't speak in such absolutes, or at least I try not to as much. Right. How about that? <laughs> that was a good example. <laughs> I don't, or at least I try not to as much. Oh, that's okay. cute. Yeah. It really is cute. There, anyway, it goes on a lot more, and he says some really wonderful things. And I actually read this to your brother, and he loved it. He really mm -hmm. did. It was really nice. And uh, yeah, but that's a really important line that, you know, exceptional people really do, you know, they do really well with going outside of conventional methods, mm -hmm. you know, to have me as a member or this work as a member of your success team is incredibly valuable because you get an opportunity to express more of your exceptionalness or do you get the chance to be mm -hmm. embraced instead of being broken? You know, right. that you can be literally seen absolutely. in the fullness and that's a big one, you know? Absolutely. For, for, for many of us for the first time. Mm. Yeah, I'm still in awe that, you know, that we're still such a secret and I'm okay with that. I really am. But uh, it does blow my mind a little bit that, um, you know, just even organically that this thing hasn't picked up more steam without more efforting, you know, like, and I don't just choose not to effort. I just choose to trust that if that's happening organically, you know, small moves, Ellie, that this is the way it's supposed to be, you know, mm -hmm. even though I have incredible visions of great things, but I don't want to start getting too aggressive in achieving those things. Cause I feel like there's going to be too great of a cost in the quality of what I hear, you know, and what, and how I process. And it just seems like then I'm starting to become more therapeutic than thrivaputic, you know, trying to affect an outcome mm -hmm. rather than welcome the integrity of the feedback and letting it be easy, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's that too. <laughs> <laughs> but it isn't oh i mean when i watched my video with you from 2014 it's like wow this stuff has been really good for a long time <laughs> it's like we've been having now the content itself and the insights you know give me the juice that changes throughout the years obviously and that's wonderful but the juice itself behind it has always been like oh. i mean and it's palpable i mean i've always felt that so it's, you know, that's, that's the part that absolutely amazes me. And maybe like Gary plays a big role in all of this because he might be the necessary bridge because mm -hmm. he's organically enthusiastic right. about doing this, about bringing such great energy and mojo out into the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, he loves this. I mean, you know, and it warms my heart to know how much he's getting out of this too while he's delving into this, you know? Yeah, win win. Win win win. Yep, absolutely. Anyway, I guess we could stop there, huh? That was nice. That any, was. Anything else you want to say to anybody or anything before we go? I think we're good. Thank you. Just thank you. Well, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to to putting this together and seeing what we what we made today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.